Why? Because I fucked you? You fucked me! Bleh. So today, we're gonna be talking about movies that are fucked up and gross, but this time, we're going to be putting them into this handy dandy little tier list. And look at this nice little tier list. Look at all this, and look at all these titles. There's so many titles. There's a little S word there. It's a little sexist, perhaps. There's a lot of uh, horrible animal cruelty, which is not good. I love you. When someone calls you a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, because you happen to disagree with them about tax policy or same-sex marriage or abortion, that's bullying. Martyrs is gonna go in the disturbing and good category. We're, we're getting to this place where this is just like a thing. It's gonna take up the whole page, I guess. Martyrs is, is fabulous. I, I love Martyrs. I would almost go far as far to say that I stan this movie. It's, it's some good shit. It's basically two women, we're not gonna call them lesbians, but maybe, who they love each other and they support each other until one of them decides to murder an entire family, and then they find out that the family was actually up to some bullshit. And that's all you gotta know. You gotta watch that movie. Martyrs is really fucking good. May? That's my name! May has no relation to the film. Angela Bettis and I kind of look similar, don't we? Here we go, right? Think about it. Look, I like this movie, but it's not disturbing. It is good though. I, you know, I, I think a lot of people think that I like this movie more than I do because my name is May, but that's kind of like asking people if, if their favorite movie is something else because there's a guy named John in it. I mean, that's ridiculous. My name is just May. I didn't decide it. It was given to me by God. Meet the Feebles. I'm gonna put it in the disturbing but not good category uh, because it is disturbing mostly for it being like, just kind of like nightmare puppet shit. Like if anybody watches this, like your your poor brain is just gonna get really fucking bothered by, by the contents of this. Maybe we'll be a little careful handling Meet the Feebles. Megan is Missing is gonna go in the uh, fucking wow category as it is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Oh! People continue to talk about it on TikTok. It's kind of like a very modern, like contemporary story about like human trafficking and kids like having their friends just straight up go missing because they just got caught in human trafficking. It's like a very 2021 problem, you know what I mean? People like talking about Megan is Missing for that fact, but oh my God, it's the worst performed movie. No, I don't. You just said I was sexy. Then you're stupid too. Uh, as a found footage movie, it's like bafflingly terrible. I hate it. It's just really, really bad. It definitely deserves to be on the fucking wow category out of all of these. It's not disturbing, it's not good, but it is something else. Men Behind the Sun, uh, I'm gonna put this one in the uh, disturbing and good category. Let's let's do it. Why not? Um, this one's, there's a lot of like weird scientific experimentation and shit in this one, and it's quite bothersome. Like, like it troubles me quite a bit, so it, it probably would trouble you. Watching it kind of like took a little bit of a toll on May's brain, although I will say probably over half of it was kind of dull, but it does get there. So if you keep watching, it's gonna do it to you. This is shows you Sabaki, I think. Do I have to put it somewhere? I'm gonna put it in the, Disturbing, but not good sex. Uh, that's whatever. I, that's where I remember it being. I think people actually think this is pretty good. I'm gonna make everybody happy, and I'm gonna put it in the haven't seen category so that I can reevaluate it because everybody got mad at me last time. Midsummer is. I'm gonna put it in the both good and disturbing category. So movie about indoctrination uh, into a cult, but, but also it's like sometimes when you get pulled or roped into something that's like bad, essentially a, a white supremacist death cult, when she's falling into it, she's falling into it because she's being more or less pushed into it because she's being pushed out of like all of her traditional ideas of life and death. So she's kind of being isolated. Her boyfriend's isolating her. Everyone's isolating her. Nobody's helping her with her grief. So of course, somebody who comes in and is like, well, we all grieve collectively, entice somebody to end up in a situation where they do things that are cruel and horrible. So yeah, it's rather good. You should check it out. Mother, on the other hand, is uh, not good or disturbing, even though I think I probably had a panic attack watching this the first time I watched it. Not so tough now, poor baby. 
It was more the freneticness of the movie, like... Baby May makes excuses. If you've seen Requiem for a Dream, that movie is edited solely to make you have a panic attack. Kind of hyperventilating and you're finding the movie, like, kind of intoxicating. That's natural, but that doesn't make it good. Topped by facts and logic. And that also doesn't make it disturbing. I think disturbing requires, like, some level of, like, something that actually touches you deep inside and changes the way that you look at things. And this definitely didn't do that for me. Good, I think, requires some kind of something, like, some baseline something that I can really feel like I can grip onto ideologically and I just don't have that here and I really don't have anything emotionally either so I'm kind of of the opinion that mother is just not very good what is this called? Man Bites Dog is uh, both good and disturbing. It's a found footage movie. Uh, basically, some journalists follow around a serial killer and they end up taking part in some of the stuff that he does. So it's kind of like a, a movie about journalists and how often like journalists like end up kind of pipelining into doing the very things that they're trying to report on. Journalism is like an exciting way for us to learn about things we actually want to be doing, but we we feel socially in, in, unable to do. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good movie. Murder set pieces I haven't seen because I am over the age of 25. I just haven't found time for murder set pieces, I must admit. Like when I was looking at this big list here, you see this big here, all this. Yeah, somehow uh, I didn't have time for murder set pieces. Mysterious Skin is, uh, I'm gonna put it in the good but not disturbing category. The it being disturbing or not thing kind of comes down to whether or not you have childhood trauma related to like sexual abuse because it's basically a movie about sexual abuse as like a kid and how that manifests as you get older and it manifests in a really kind of fucky wucky way. I wouldn't call it disturbing in that it doesn't really bother me. Um, and I think the reason that a lot of people like Mysterious Skin is because the the whole I got abducted by aliens as a euphemism for having been molested is like a really, really good euphemism for that. My experience is very different than the experience of the movie. Perhaps that's because I'm a girl. Natural Born Killers is not good or disturbing. It's mostly just like a, a completely messy shock thing. I don't know, Oliver Stone is like a, is like a madman uh, and Tarantino wrote quite the script. And also I think Mickey and Mallory are both very well cast. It's just there's something about the movie that just really doesn't, I just don't like it. I don't know, it's kind of scuzzy. That's where I'm at with it. It's a 90s thing or 2000s, like, and it kind of feels like it. It feels like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but without, like, without the purpose. Necromantic is, is gonna go in the fucking wow category. May loves necrophilia. It's weird how much May loves necrophilia. It is a movie literally just about people having sex with dead bodies and that being fun and great. It's weird how much May loves necrophilia. May would be perfect if she didn't love necrophilia. Uh, and also, when you watch it, it's just, ooh boy, it's gonna do it to you. How could you forget any of these lovely images like this one? Ah, yes, there we have it. Good shit here. I'm nobody. Yeah, I don't know, it's my weird fascination. I actually really, I'm kind of into this movie, but it, it kind of, it's kind of, it's from a different planet. Like it exists on the exterior of like good and bad and it exists on the fringe of like taste. It's like a kind of a comedy movie. Like it's kind of ironic. I don't even know. It's so all over the place, but oh boy. No child of mine. I do not even know what this is. Shortly after her mother's new boyfriend moves in with them and begins physically and sexually abusing her. Prostitution. She is seduced by a pimp for some time, willingly leases herself for profit. Towards the end, Carrie runs away and finds a small and peaceful care home in a rural ro location. So it's just like some girl is like really, really super fucking traumatized and it's just a documentary about this. Well, damn, that sucks. Uh, let's put it in the haven't seen because I clearly haven't seen it, but I totally would check it out. That sounds very fascinating. Old boy is, is, is not disturbing, but it is good. I, I think the only reason anybody would say it's disturbing is for the very, very end. But more than anything, it's just like a really good ass movie. Like it's just a good action movie. I love Old Boy. Old Boy is fabulous. Orzoko, uh, the, the embalmer, is a movie basically following an embalmer and he like dies halfway through the movie. It's really miserable. I, I looked up a lot about this, so much so that I felt strongly that I did not need to watch it. I did not watch this and I have not seen this, but I did enough research on this to know that I didn't want to watch it. So I figured that that was good enough for me. Philosophy of a Knife is bad. 
uh, I didn't like it at all. It's basically uh, Men Behind the Sun, kind of. Dumb and kind of like really, really, really like anti-communist. If you've got educated problems with communism, please uh, elaborate. But, but here, this, not so much. Pink Flamingos is both disturbing and good. It's just a comedy romp about a drag queen who does a bunch of fucked up stuff to some people who deserve it. And don't we love that? Poughkeepsie Tapes is uh, not disturbing, but I'm going to call it good, even though I don't even think I like it. I mean, it was at least interesting. It's, the, the general idea is like a found footage compilation of a bunch of tapes from a serial killer. So that's kind of interesting, but it, it really, I don't know. Just doesn't go far enough for May. May is one of the puss in the mother world. May wants it to be worse. Raw is uh, both good and disturbing. Raw is not disturbing, but it is good. Yes, that's where I'm gonna stick with it. Cause it's, it is a really, really good movie, but but a lot of the cannibalism stuff in the movie, like it didn't really bother me, I'm gonna be real with you. Like it didn't really bother me. It was very artistically made. And I think a lot of people at the time when this came out were talking about how people were like passing out in a the theater cause it was so uncomfortably horrible. But uh, I saw it, I didn't pass out in the theater. I watched the whole fucking thing. Mazum. Probably a psychopath. You know what movie isn't on this list? Gerald's Game. I had a panic attack and passed out watching Gerald's Game the first time I watched it, but this is fucking on here? All right, whatever. Red Room, I, I have not seen this, and I know better than to Google this, so I'm not going to Google it, but I probably do need to see this at some point. Mazum. Probably a psychopath. It is very much in my wheelhouse, and everyone is talking about it. Hoo boy. Yes. I think this is Regurgitated Sacrifice. I have seen this. So it turns out that uh, that our boy, <laughs> Lucifer Valentine, is kind of a little bit known, I suppose, for being a little bit of an abusive piece of shit, uh, which I'm unsurprised of, about, given that I've seen his movies. You know, perhaps he's like one of those guys who's just like, I found some interesting subjects. I didn't do it, but uh, maybe he did. And when I look at the movies, I sure don't see ethical things. I've been on a lot of film sets. This is not an ethical film. None of this isn't ethical. Like none of this is okay. So it's gonna have to go in the disturbing but not good category. I don't think it's good anyway. I will say it's disturbing. It's a piece of disturbing media that is genuinely disturbing. I don't think anybody should pay to watch these, uh, nor do I, I even think you can pay to watch them. I think you'd have to buy the DVDs and the DVDs are like exuberantly expensive and nobody needs that, right? Requiem for a Dream is, is good and disturbing. No, it's not though. It's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's disturbing, but it's not good. That's, I've got to say that. I've got to say that because like, listen, look here. I've done a, I've done, I've done some drugs. Like I know a thing or two. Uh, this is an exploitation film. Uh, now, now I will say it's true that drugs can super ruin your life in really horrible ways, but this is like a very pro war on drugs movie in a weird way. Like it explains the, the tangible real world reality of the war on drugs, which is to say that people's lives get fucked up and you have to watch that. But at the same time, it blames them. Like it blames the characters for, for, for a lot of it. And, and their dream is like the, the requiem for a dream aspect of it is like, they all have a dream and their dream is like some very small minor thing and it's taken away, but it has the, the most impact. I don't know, it, it, everything in it is geared to give you a panic attack, but it stars Jared Leto. He has a bad New York accent. That's not a good start. And also like the thing that I love about this movie, the thing I want to put it here for is the stuff with uh, Ellen Burstein in the fridge, which if you've seen the movie, Ellen Burstein gets attacked by her fridge because she's been hallucinating that the fridge has been attacking her. That's kind of great. I love that. I don't love the rest of it. I don't love the ending. And every time I've watched it since, I've thought that the ending was more and more hammy and kind of ridiculous, manipulatively panic inducing. Sallow or 120 Days of Sodom is gonna go in the disturbing and good category. This is a movie about a, uh, a gay boy who decided to take down fascism with his movie just depicting fascism. And the reason he did it was because he was like, I don't want Italy to ever forget the shit that they did. And so I'm gonna put it on a movie. But, the, but here's the fucked up part. He, he did this movie pretty soon after the events. So people uh, didn't like that he did this and uh, he is uh, dead. Perhaps because of this, perhaps, or perhaps because he did some molestation. Who knows? 
Also, I, I don't know. I, I hear tell that Pier Paolo Pasolini also might have uh, had a lurid past with some other things. So who knows? He might be a scumbag. Regardless, the movie stands. And, and that is a thing that you have to kind of do here with any of these is there's a death of the artist element to any of these when you're when you're categorizing them this is objectively like very disturbing and i think it's pretty good but on a moral level like it kind of doesn't matter because it's a disturbing movie <laughs> I, I, I guess i can't want it to not be fucked up saw is gonna go in the good but not disturbing mostly just like seven it's not even very shocking there's not any real serious gore in it even like it's, it's pretty toned down to be honest like it's not even close to disturbing i i don't know i think the sequels like improved on the disturbing aspect while well really fucking up the story elements seven is uh also not disturbing but good uh it's kind of like saw in that you know they both look kind of like sickly green and they both have some gross shit in it, and there's some dismemberment, but it's mostly toned down on the disturbing and the gore and shit, so it's really not that fucked up. I've never really been a big fan of Seven. I've always thought that Seven was okay. Everybody talks about Kevin Spacey at the end, and the funny thing is, Kevin Spacey at the end just turned out to be Kevin Spacey in real life, now didn't it? Shogun Sadism is a movie I have not seen, so I'm gonna put it in the haven't seen category, although perhaps one day. I'll do it, I don't give a fuck! Singapore Sling is going to go in the disturbing and good category. This is just a very funny movie about uh, some people who vomit and pee on a guy. May was into water sports the whole time. That's all you got. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Uh, Slaughtered Vomit Dolls is going to go right next to uh, its other movie, and I'm not going to talk about them. I'm just going to skip these because I already said everything I needed to say, and I don't want to talk about vomit porn anymore. May loves her vomit porn. Uh, Snowtown is... Mm, I don't know. I've seen this movie twice. I didn't like it. I think it's a little bit slow. I don't really care about its ultimate point, and yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm trying, okay? Snuff 102 uh, is admittedly a movie I haven't seen, but I have done enough research on and I've seen enough things about it to know that it's like something I will dislike vehemently. Just the other day, I was out shopping and I found this on DVD for 10 whole dollars, you motherfucker. So I'm gonna watch this shit. That's right, I'm gonna watch it and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like it. So it's gonna go in the haven't scenes. Society is... Uh, not disturbing, but it is good. I, I guess it's not disturbing because it's too funny. It's just too funny, too many jokes. Generally, just kind of like a weird huddled mass of rich people doing society things and how like one lone depressed gay kid really doesn't want to participate. Subconscious cruelty is not good or disturbing. It's hours of nothingness. Like it was, there was, there was some stuff that was in there, but it was a lot of like dumb poetry and like trash. Sweet movie, I admittedly have not seen Sweet movie, but I do have a DVD of it, and one of these days I plan to watch it. Taxidermia I have not seen, but one of these days I plan to watch it. Tetsuo the Iron Man is both good and disturbing. I would say that this is probably one of the highlighting achievements of both good and disturbing movies. Like, it is a stop-motion film, it's very compellingly made, it's about someone with a with a metal fetish, like, there's so much going on in this that's shocking and weird, and and creative, that's the big part. Cause like, really when you break it down, how many of these are about serial killers? How many of these are about the porn to snuff pipeline? How many of these are about, you know, childhood abuse? You know, you, you got like three or four things, but this one, yeah, it's about, it's a body horror movie with stop motion elements about uh, a guy who like gets possessed by the ghost of a, vo of a fucking metal fetishist. So it's, it's really creative stuff and it's gotta go in the disturbing and good category. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is obviously going to go in the disturbing and good category. It's a miracle that the movie would end up here, given that there's like no blood and guts. There's hardly any gore or any problems whatsoever, but it just does it. It just like it, it scratches the itch and no other movie on this list admittedly has the same iconographic, just like immediacy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like the second you hear it, you can see the whole movie in your head. And and that's just because this movie is just fucking really compelling. Uh, ABCs of Death and ABCs of Death 2 are both not good and disturbing. Uh, although there were segments in both of them that I enjoyed, 
mostly I found them tedious and boring and I wanted to die or tear my eyes out. So I hated watching them and I probably would not watch them again. The bridge is both uh, disturbing and good. Although, big trigger warning, you do just dead ass watch suicides in this one. Listen, I've seen a lot of suicides in my life. I, listen, I'm not, look at me. I look like the kind of person who have, who's seen a couple of suicides. I've even participated in a couple. Man, it's one of the, worst in the, world, the, world. the bridge is uh, basically about how people get this fascination with the Golden Gate Bridge and they want to jump off of it and, and die because they think that it's like some sort of magical like experience. And part of it is like this ambivalent like reaction to this beautiful thing. And it's just like people go to beautiful places, unfortunately, to die. So you get to watch that. If that bothers you, then I wouldn't watch it. The bunny game is going to go in the not good or disturbing. It's mostly just irritating. It's just loud and irritating. The Devil's Rejects is going to go in the disturbing and good category, along with, uh, I, I put House of Thousand Corpses in the not disturbing but good quality uh, kind of place, but I would say The Devil's Rejects is basically House of a Thousand Corpses if it replaced its sense of humor with actually really disturbing shit. Big ups to the cast for, for putting up with it. It's kind of horrible at times. It's, it's Rob Zombie's movie that actually is kind of effective. The Fly is both good and disturbing, and the reason I'm going to put it there and say that it's both good and disturbing, Jeff Goldblum eats a donut with his own vomit, and that gets a 10 out of 10 for Ole May. <laughs> I fucking... The Girl Next Door is both good and disturbing as well. Uh, Jack Ketchum writes about some pretty horrible crime. Who boy, woman gets her vagina burned with a blowtorch. So if you have a problem with that, might I recommend turning on Titanic? The Greasy Strangler is gonna have to go in the fucking wow category just because like, I don't know a single movie that exists that's even remotely like this movie. This is like my favorite comedy of all time. I don't understand this movie. If it's making a joke about itself, even that is strange because it's even making a joke about how it's making a joke about itself. It's like on several different levels of comedy while also being immature and stupid in such a way that it makes you think it was made by dumb people. It's kind of amazing. I'm gonna dunk Big Ronnie's dog all the way in. Okay, admittedly, I don't know what this says. Well, I don't speak Russian. I'm gonna put it in the having scenes because I don't know what it is. The Green Inferno is is not good or disturbing. It is a comedy film. It is a film you watch to have a laugh. I remember watching The Green Inferno in the theater and it was like a really harrowing experience to watch every single person in the whole theater leave except for me. And there were like 50 people when it started. I have never seen so many people walk out of a movie. Why, because I fucked you? It sucked. Uh, the Human Centipede 2, 3, and the first one. Okay, so the first one is gonna go in the not disturbing but good category because it's kind of funny and weird, and I kind of think that it's great that it exists just as a piece of strange media. Like, I think it's kind of neat. The Human Centipede 2 is legitimately very upsetting, but it's definitely not uh, good. So I'm gonna put it in disturbing but not good. The Human Centipede 3 is not good or disturbing. It is just a piece of shit. Uh, Life and Death of a Porno Gang is gonna go in the... Let's go in the disturbing and good. Where did I put a Serbian film? I put it here. Disturbing but not good. You know, admittedly, I don't have a lot of connections to this. Like, this doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So I'm gonna put it here, too. For fairness! For fairness! They're competing movies. Come on. I've never seen The Plague Dogs. Uh, I saw The Road a long time ago and I did not find it particularly disturbing, but I do think it was pretty good. I remember it being somewhat good. So I'm gonna put it here. Even though, admittedly, I, I'll just level with you. I don't remember. Uh, the Skin I Live In is both disturbing and good. Uh, it's basically a movie about someone getting a forced gender transition and how that super duper fucks with them. But it's also a movie about just like gender just as a concept, just like being forced upon you. Like everybody has to adapt to, to gender in some harrowing way that's that's almost like, that's very medical and that's very like constricting. And so it's hard to make those decisions when you're being forced to make those decisions. So the movie is mostly about people being forced to make gender decisions, uh, which we all have to make. The thing is, Mm hmm. I, I gotta put it in the disturbing and good. It's a classic movie. It's like one of the best horror movies ever. Super fucking scary. I mean, of course it's super fucking scary. It's the thing. 
I can't, there's nothing I can say that's negative about the thing. So it's definitely going in the disturbing and good category. The woman I saw a long time ago and I did not like it. I could, maybe, maybe it's good now. Maybe I've grown up. Threads is both disturbing and good. Uh, it's a movie about like post-nuclear England and it's like a faux documentary about what would happen if we lived in post-nuclear England. And oh boy, I don't want to live in post-nuclear England. Everybody's gonna fucking die. <laughs> Titty Cut Follies is disturbing and good. Uh, it is about, uh, good luck finding this. Okay, because it's like, I, I'm pretty sure the director doesn't really want people to just have access to this. Like mentally ill uh, prisoners and how they were treated and it, they're treated bad. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but they were treated pretty bad. Uh, Tokyo Gore Police is not good or disturbing. God, was it 10 years ago? It was 10 fucking years ago. It's like a gore movie, but it, but I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me very much. I'm not really into movies that are, I don't know. Like, I like a gore action movie, but I don't really like gore as a joke. It has to be really serious for me to laugh. If it takes a little bit too much of a step over the phantasmagorical, it doesn't really do anything for me anymore. So this one doesn't really do much for me. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I need to rewatch it. Maybe I need to rewatch it. It's been a long time. Tusk is uh, not good or disturbing. It's almost disturbing because Kevin Smith made it. Uh, or they thought that it would be a funny idea or they thought that it would, I don't even know. Like I've listened to the podcast where this, this came from. I don't know what tone they were attempting. I don't know what tone they were attempting. But yeah, I, there's a walrus suit and it looks really, really dumb and bad. And all the acting is really dumb and bad. And also, I guess it's a comedy, but it's irritating. It's that Johnny Depp has a dick for a nose. I don't know what else to tell you. Baca de Noches is something I have not yet watched yet because it is about having sex with pigs, something that doesn't um, appeal, um, appeal to, to me. me. Vile, I've never seen. I don't even know what this is, to be honest. Maybe I should Google it. Let's Google it together. Directed by Taylor Sheridan. Taylor Sheridan fucking <laughs> wrote Sicario. So Vile is, this has got to be like a movie, right? This has got to be like a real movie. Visitor Q is both uh, disturbing and good. It is the other like Takashi Miike holy grail uh, movie. But there's a part in the movie where a, a, a father is having sex with someone who is very young um, and she dies. And he continues having sex with her, but he can't get his dick out of her because of the rigor mortis. Yeah, I don't really know what else to tell you. Watership Down. I saw this when I was a kid. I feel like this is on there for people to be like, oh, yeah, when I was a kid, this really, really fucked me up. Uh, and it's pretty, it is pretty hardcore. But, um, you know, honestly, I don't think I remember it enough to properly rank it. I might have to, I'm going to throw this one here because I think the last time I saw this was in high school when I read Watership Down. So I don't think... I've like seen it in a recent amount of time to actually make any determinations here. We need to talk about Kevin is pretty good, but it's not very disturbing. So I'm going to put it in not di disturbing, but good. And, and with, with a big highlight that, that Tilda Swinton gives an amazing performance in this. She's just fabulous. You got to check it out just for, just for her alone. Like she's fabulous. When the Blind Blows, I, I have not seen. I don't even know what that is. It looks to be some kind of animated thing. But then we get to talk about Where the Dead Go to Die, which is going to go right at the top in the fucking wow category. This is an animated nightmare movie. Here, I'll just show you some. I killed myself the other day. Oh, now, Sophie, I don't need that. Every sound that you make. It's just going to be another 15 minutes and you get to be tied up I killed myself. Yeah, so uh, I don't even know what the fuck is going on there. Uh, but but if you've watched any of my videos, I've made a lot of jokes about Jimmy Screamer Claus being like just this very <laughs> prolific animator who makes this like really weird shit. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's worth watching if only for this weird rapport between this kid and his like demonic dog. Wow, look at this. Look, look what we've done. We've done the tier list. It's, it's here, we've finished it. It took us a while. I've been sitting here for hours doing this uh, and I'm probably going to do more of these. This was kind of fun. If this is the kind of Halloween content that you crave, then please let me know because I'm looking to do some some spooky Halloween content. If you like... 
If you like my videos, you should check me out on Patreon or consider subscribing. My green screen fell over. <laughs> and make sure and subscribe. <laughs> I can't, I keep trying and I can't do it. Look, thank you all for being here. I, I love you and I bless up for being here. Thank you for being here for my, for my cool tier list. And maybe I'll do another one real soon. Consider subscribing, consider giving me a dollar on Patreon and check out my new album called There Will, There Is, no way out. It's out right now. You should check it out on Bandcamp. It's going to be up on Spotify here in a couple of days. So thank you all for coming out. If you have a suggestion for a video you would like to see or a tier list that you would like to see me make, uh, consider leaving that in the comments or leaving anything in the comments. I just would like any of your comments. All of your comments are beautiful and lovely and I like, I like to read all of them. So if that's your vibe, you know, please let me know what you would like to see more of in the future and we will talk very soon. I love you. I'm so glad that we decided to take our relationship to the next level. I can't wait to see what we do together. As a couple, you and me, me and you, dating. Wow, this is gay. All right, goodbye, I love you. <laughs>